Okay, so where we left off, I was using a clone stamp layer as a texture overlay on the hands here, and they help a lot. And so now I'm just gonna gently erase away from some of the areas where they're a little confusing. And maybe bring a little bit of the highlight back. It also helps each of these hands feel individual. Even though they're from the same source, now they don't feel at all kind of copy-pasted. And then zoomed in, just before I submit everything, I can see that maybe some of that texture would help on the, um, the pine cones as well. So I might do that again with more clone stamping, make a new layer. So these are all clone stamp layers, but I'm treating them differently, different opacities, different layer styles. And so I'm gonna start with clone stamp, steal the shell, paint it right over the top of the pine cone, right? And then just try a different blending mode like pin light. And it gives it a little bit more variety, maybe soft light. Yeah, I like that. And then I can just erase away a little bit to give some highlight in the middle. And on and on and on. And then I can clone stamp at any time. Kind of shadows. Because now I'm clone stamping on a soft light layer. Which can be really handy for lighting. And I'm clone stamping in from shadows. To shadows. Even onto the tail even onto the back of the legs. To the back foot. Um, I can use dodge and burn directly or sponge. I'm gonna take away a little bit of the color from the shell at the wrist here and from the yellow of the shell at this wrist. I'm gonna burn a little bit of the shell at this wrist. Actually burn is not right, let's see. What is it? I want to actually burn the highlights down a little bit. It's just not something I do very often, but it's needed. And so we're just looking at these subtle differences. Burn the highlights of the snout a little bit. Okay, so now it's all together. How do I, I make sure it's going to be one nice submitted outline? kind of sticker of my creature. So the trick is I have to look at those clone stamp layers and see that there's some parts of it that maybe aren't as solid as I want, right? Like these feathers. So on the clone stamp, I'm gonna cut them out. This isn't on the combined layer, this is just on the clone stamp layer. Same thing here. So you got to treat your edges. Oh. So what layer is that on? It's on the combined layer. So now I'm kind of trimming from the different layers, just like we did with the cartoon jumble. Little bits that need to go or need to be softened or need to be dodged, need to be burned. Like right here. Burn that down a little. Then erase it out. I still have a two pixel feather on my direct lasso tool, which I think is helpful for these kind of adjustments. Ah. And remember that any adjustment, anything you select, you can hold down option and you can erase away from. Since I made a mistake there. All right, we can kind of clean it up. 
clean it up. Come back here, clean it up. Okay, so the final step is to have all of your clone stamp layers turned on with your merged combined layer. So those are all my clone stamp layers. I actually didn't do a whole lot of clone stamping on this creature, but what I did was pretty effective. Made a big difference towards kind of making it all look more believable. And now we're gonna merge all of those. So I go to the top layer, I hold down option and I say layer merge visible again. So it's all together and this I'll make green. This is my one combined layer with everything. Now to make sure it's clean on the outside, I can use my magic wand with contiguous turned on, tolerance of 32, select on the outside, select any undercuts, select any kind of weird softness, right? I can even extend it, like add shift with my lasso and say, no, really get in there. It's because my brush overshot this when I was clone stamping overshot this a little bit. And even though there's almost nothing there, there's something there or it wouldn't be selecting it. Okay. And then you can see the little bit of something and you can kind of cut it out. So getting all that little debris, all those little remnants, And honestly, sometimes you need to make the selection <coughs> from your combined layer, right? And now I'm going to erase away with a 100% eraser that's soft and big. And the only, th uh, not that big, <laughs> the only things I'm going to avoid are those areas where I added to the outline with the clone stamp. So like under the under the legs there. But I can take off the little bloom that I added otherwise. Between the fingers. And that's the final kind of cleaning up so that we can bring this creature as like a sticker into our landscape and it will come in neatly. Okay, so now I save it command S as my PSD. I've got my com combined layer that's finished. I'm gonna mark it orange. Actually, let's mark it yellow, let's mark it green. No, we already have green, let's mark it yellow. There we go. And I'm gonna label it final Final combined layer here, which is perfectly cut out and has everything together in one layer, that's what we're going to move into our landscape. So this becomes very helpful. You can also take that final combined layer and you can very quickly just do an image auto tone. <laughs> and you can see how that will sometimes even out its color and its lighting. And that's more even and neutral. So I like that. So I'm going to keep that. Now I can save it save as without the background right and cropped saved as a png and this is what's going to go into photo bucket along with my sketch so i'm going to save it to the desktop i have it named with my name and assignment two remember you can use command d to navigate to the desktop from these searches and instead of as a psd i'm going to save it not as a JPEG, because I don't want it to fill in the background with white. I want to save it as a PNG, just like our cartoon jumble, so it preserves the transparency behind it. Use all the defaults. PNGs can take a little bit longer to save, but they are well worth it, so we don't have to delete all that white to use it. And then I can check it in preview. I can double click, it will open in preview, and I'll see it with a, a slightly light gray background. And it should look pretty clean there. And if I want to, I can even do some final adjust colors 
just within preview, like auto levels here, see if it's any different. That's pretty different. It really brightens it up and I can then tone that down a little bit. Um, I can play with its color temperature overall, warm it up, cool it down. This will edit the PNG, but not my PSD. I can see what it looks like with a ton of saturation, with very little saturation, but I want it, want it to have some color I can use. I can uh, soften its highlights or soften its shadows. See what's useful there. But ultimately, I want it to be believable. And so let's see, is that better than that? Yeah, it's a little, a little strong. I'll play this down a little. Okay. And now that is what I'm going to submit. Actually, I don't like what I did in preview. So I'm going to save it again. So you save it as a PSD, and then you save it as a PNG to put into photo bucket. Now I already have my sketch. You just save your sketch as a JPEG. And it all is in your folder. So I save to the desktop so I can always find it easily. But my PNG is safe in my folder. And my sketch is safe in my folder. So if I open up my folder for assignment two, I'm going to grab my sketch, drag it out to the desktop, and then move both of those into photo bucket. And we navigate to Digital Art 1 and to Assignment 2. Come on. You use the sidebars on Assignments. And you are going to put yours into the Collage Creature folder. You already are doing that. I'm going to put mine into Instructional Examples. And then you have to title them so they show up together. So I'm going to take my sketch and my creature. My sketch is a JPEG. My creature is a PNG. And then as they come in, I find them. And you can tell the difference between the PNGs, they have that kind of off-white background, and the JPEGs, which will have a solid white background. Uh-oh, didn't like something. Let's see. Ah, uh, photo bucket. Sometimes refreshing will help. Let's see if they come in. Now, PNGs are larger than JPEGs. So if we do a Git info on it, you'll see how large it is. But it is useful to have that transparency. You want to save your sketch as a JPEG and keep that below 5 megabytes. And then you want to title your sketch with SP20, your name, and the All right, so I wanted, I want to submit my creature as a PNG, but I think Photobucket had some trouble with it just because it's so large. Even as a PNG, it's 17 megabytes. So what can I do? Well, I can open it up, not from Photoshop, but from Preview, and I can just reduce its size a little bit. 
because right now if I go to tools, oh, I don't need this open.